So in this video, I kind of um, wanted to get ourselves just generally familiar with Nodios. Um, we probably actually won't even do very much CLI stuff. Uh, I really just kind of want to poke around and uh, show you generally where things are stored and uh, what those files are used for, what data is being written into those files, what data is being read from those files, things like that. Um, while it's not explicitly necessary, I think it's kind of helpful to know that way when things go wrong you can easily debug them um, either by you know just deleting the file altogether or you know editing the file tweaking the file to suit your own needs for you know whatever you're trying to do it's just generally a good idea to know where these are stored um, so in the previous video we, we were running Nodios um, one thing I will call out is I added this extra dash dash plugin EOSIO colon colon wallet API plugin. This will allow us to interact with the wallet. Um, I'm actually not going to do too much with respect to the wallet other than show you where it gets stored. Um, we'll talk about the wallet extensively in another video. So for now we'll just start up the node just like usual. And where um, Nodios stores its data is actually in this directory here. You'll see the home.local directory. Um, for each operating system, it's different. You could easily find this with a quick Google search. I highly recommend doing that just so you kind of ha have your whereabouts with respect to what you're looking at here. Um, it's not in the uh, the GitHub repo uh, directory. It's in, in your actual computer's directory. And if you look what's in these directories, we have uh, two, two directories inside of the Nodios directory, a config and a data directory. If we go into the data directory, this is where blocks and state are stored. So uh, I'll just show you that really quickly. Um, these are just two binary um, binary bits of data where the block data is actually being written. Uh, if we go up and go into the state, you can see this is where the shared memory stuff is actually being st st stored. I, I believe this is where the RAM database essentially kind of stuff is stored, but I uh, could be wrong about that. Um, so if we go into the other directory, this one's a little bit more interesting. The config directory has the config.ini and the genesis.json file. So if we look in this config.ini, a couple of the tutorials on the developer documentation actually have you editing this, this file um, for different reasons. Um, this kind of just allows you to set a bunch of different um, constants associated with Nodios when it starts up. For example, you can load it with a predefined public-private key pair. This allows you to control the EOS I/O account, which allows you to, you know, uh, give yourself EOS and things like that running on your local net. You can see here you're defining the Genesis.json, um, things like that. You'll notice also when we ran Nodios over here, I passed in dash dash plugin. Well, you can actually define these plugins down here, and I think oftentimes that's what they'll have you do in the documentation. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things uh, here, like enable state stale production, uh, just a bunch of different settings you can kind of play around with and tweak at, at will. But I, I typically set up the, um, I just use the vanilla settings unless I really, really need to come in and change these things. Uh, but this is where it's at. I'm just showing you where it's at. Um, and then finally, we have the genesis.json file. And this file was actually created. Um, the the main net block producers when they create when they first launched the chain, um, this genesis.json file had a bunch of um, EOS uh, names, public keys mapped to values, um, which were taken from the Ethereum crowd sale, the ICO. Uh, everybody who you know purchased EOS actually got it on this genesis.json file. Um, in this case, we're running a local node, so we don't need all that extra stuff, but. Um, if you're interested, you know, definitely check out the genesis.json. I'm sure you can find it somewhere online. Um, what it actually looks like, what the block producers agreed on uh, as far as like EOS values go. Uh, okay, so, so those are the two things that are kind of stored uh, by EOS when it starts up. Um, let's start it up one more time. Uh, and another one to call out here is if I run cleos wallet create, um, you'll see uh, a default wallet was created and I was given this public, this, uh, sorry, private key. Um, and this is kind of the quote unquote password used to unlock the default wallet. And in here you can 
um, create a bunch of different key key pairs and a whole bunch of other things. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into way more depth into that in another video, probably even the next video we'll talk about um, doing that because the, the general you know workflow of, of uh, developing on EOS is you know, you'll spin up your, your local node EOS, uh, you'll create a wallet or if you already have a wallet created locally, you'll create key pairs and then map those to contracts and, and uh, deploy your smart contracts onto your local chain. But for now, um, I just wanted to show you that Whoops, uh, if we look into data, you can see now, previously, last time I did an LS in this directory, there was no um, nothing here, and now I have this default wallet. So that was created automatically by Cleos. Um, so I, I think that was kind of everything I wanted to cover in, in this video. I just kind of wanted to show you like where data is actually being stored um, by Nodios when it, when it starts up. Um, in the next video, as I said, I think we'll probably look into wallets um, and start talking about accounts and different things like that. See you in the next video.